Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Star Talks powered by Advertox, where justice gets easy. Today's discussion is on a topic of paramount importance in our legal system. It is timely justice for litigants, the importance and challenges. To discuss the same, we have with us distinguished guests who bring a wealth of experience and knowledge to Star Talks. Please join me in welcoming retired Principal District and Sessions Judge. Mr. Sangappa Mithil Pod, who is currently working as a senior advocate at the High Court of Karnataka. Thank you, Mr. Siraj, for inviting me to the Star Talks. I am looking forward. All right, sir. To set the stage, let's begin with some analysis from our guests on the topic. So, Mr. Sangappa, sir, could you please share your thoughts on the importance of timely justice in today's legal landscape? Yes. Today's legal landscape means we are now having legal justice dispensation system. So we have to do justice as per the procedure established by the law. So everyone wants justice. Nobody wants injustice. So what is justice? There is no need for me to define it. But a timely justice is the caption because the today the legal system dispensing the justice is blamed, blamed mainly for the reason that there is a delay. And mainly courts are blamed in this. No doubt courts are there, but courts are not alone responsible for this. Litigants, lawyers, witnesses, government machinery, lack of infrastructure, shortage of judges, etc. are main contributor for this. So despite of this, Justice system is going on, but it requires a speed which is able to deliver justice on time to the litigants. Therefore, in this context, I may mention that already the infrastructure is improved a lot. Therefore, we can think, expect something good, Mr. Siraj. Thank you, sir. So let's try to focus our discussion maybe on the litigants. So please provide your perspective on how the timely justice is going to impact the litigants in specific? The timely justice means we have got mainly two, two types of cases, that is civil cases and criminal cases. Others, other fields are there, but now so far as the courts are concerned, we are mainly concerned civil and criminal. Civil yes. cases are getting delayed decades in by decades. Criminal cases are also getting delayed by years. So to avoid this, See, timely justice means providing a timely medicine to the patient when he needs it. Right. Therefore, the in our Karnataka, in during 93, mm -hmm. there was a fast track courts, I mean the pilot court scheme, where right. the high court has fixed the time the limit of one year for disposal of the cases. They would give a list of cases. Those cases okay. have to be disposed of within one year. Right. So for this, my suggestion is that civil cases to be disposed of within one year after plaint is presented by covering all the stages. And criminal cases have to be disposed of within six months after charge sheet is filed. Right. If this right. is achieved, time, giving timely justice to the litigants may not be so difficult because this is the reasonable and ideal time. Even in next two stages also, within right. two years, even the matter could be concluded up to Supreme Court. So this is the best idea which you, for this, no doubt it is, it looks like utopian, but it's not utopian, it's possible. It's possible. In one case, I tell you, yes. In one case, I tell you, I told you that the morning plaintiff led evidence, evening defendant led evidence and both argued. So right. that case was disposed of in within one week. So at this juncture, as a judge my, on my part, I, I, was, I was in the habit of delivering judgments within 15 days after judgments or reserved for. Not, not a single day postponed in my 30 years of service. That's excellent. To add this, yes, add this, I was uh, delivering bail orders within seven days. And my habit was pronouncing all the judgments and orders by 11 a.m. First order, then I was going for calling work. I, I, I am happy to say that sometimes the accused who got bail 11 
were in their house at 3 pm and then they appeared in some other cases so okay, that we okay. could that, that's that's uh, totally interesting sir and uh, excellent insight as such i am I, I think we are getting a lot of um, uh, you know cases where the, it can be possible and uh, yes. timely justice is not just as you said it's impossible it may be tough but with the support of multiple uh, you know stakeholders it's actually possible sir with uh, um, your experience on the bench like how did timely justice has actually enhanced or maybe uh, it has sometimes it can actually have an alternate uh, repercussions also on the overall judicial process i mean like we wanted to know from your vast three decades of personal experience where you would have faced so much delay in particular case or on contrast you found a very quicker settlement of litigation so what were the factors that contributed uh, to you know so called much delay or probably the very early kind of settlement uh, yes, uh, of the judgment sir yes see the problem was heavy pendency the first wherever i have taken charge heavy pendency of civil matters was there right sir but despite being not deterred by the pendency i am prioritizing the cases old cases first they have to be disposed of and at the same time what happens there was a habit in the habit for the litigants and lawyers to drag old matters right. if if they if cooperate some the, one one interesting point i tell you there was a case in one particular place that case was having some three bundles of documents three big bundles which are okay. sent from the revenue department okay those do 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 those bundles were kept in the open court and if whenever that case was called both sides were telling sir this is very heavy case sir this is very great request i am thinking that i may adjourn okay so i was in the habit of not getting uh, afraid of by these submissions i was telling okay, okay let us start today how big it is i'll see so in such what i was doing is one day on friday evening i took those bundles to my house quarters Right. i studied them on the next day noticed that in the, all the three bundles hardly 20 pages were relevant for my case okay only to, 20 pages then i told my clerk keep this 20 page in the file mm -hmm. keep those re records in the record room don't bring them to the court all right <laughs> this after this what happened you know i was able to hear those arguments in the next two, couple of months and i have disposed of matter as, as per my procedure within 15 days yes, sir i think like there is a way to look at you know how to handle each case and uh, each case may be separate yes, yes if we go deep into the matter then the, 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 this type of things so oh, this heavy matters sir no i was taking first heavy matters okay i am i am i am in the habit of taking heavy matters first okay <laughs> that was my challenge and even old criminal cases also this matter that matter any we used to get the all the first the scientific experts or uh, all the forensic expert on time i was telling them you must come and give evidence so in this way i was pressurizing all those right, but sir. i tell you my pressuring itself is not sufficient mr siras right right right, right. sir uh, i think like um, uh, that's good to know about you know how you have been able to handle or uh, probably your experience and i want to know i want to see personally like every magistrate on the lower courts and as well as in the higher courts for those matters which come up i want to see that this reflects in the judicial system as such so that's that's something my dream so i wanted to know from you sir like help us understand uh, are there any recent guidelines or landmark judgments that address this kind of issue where you know the timely justice is something which is crucial so what is that uh, we have maybe in a ready made hand um, uh, kind of a thing uh, coming from the supreme court or maybe in the higher courts what what kind of judgments are there sir which can we can relate it to see first of all i tell you the amendment of cpc in 2002 has eliminated many many intermediate steps in the civil case right crp right, so that in the crp that is now done away with now right sir every order cannot be taken and filing the written statement 
no the maximum time of one fixed one ten day but no doubt the courts have said that for doing the justice we can't be so pedantic we have to give some time some right. uh, leniency so that is done right right that, that that's right this this is basic amendment is crpc it means cpc the cpc has given us lot of uh, imp lot of strength to see that the measurements are not uh, given recklessly right. and in crpc also we have got that uh, provision 309 they say that don't adjourn matters unnecessarily on this point not one umpteen judgments have come but for this what happens is if the pendency is handy mm -hmm. ideal then this can be achieved see i tell you one in in one case where uh, i was only magistrate with 4000 cases right sir 3000 ips cases 1000 other law cases you see one only one officer okay but but still in that court i never uh, sat between uh, more than between uh, 5 to 11 11 right. to 5 right. with one hour break and i never okay. adjourned any matters and i was attending all interim orders bail orders releasing orders and work so in that fashion i managed so one thing uh, i want to tell mr siraj yes sir how a delay has occurred in one case because of the wrong submission and the judge not taking serious note right a matter was pending for 10 years a simple small matter the country and town planning mm -hmm. act so my habit was i was always uh, keeping a note of these old matters after my going to that place i noticed that there was a mention in the order sheet right matter is stayed after 6 months i noticed that still it is pending since 10 year 10 years this year yes something must be wrong yeah. then i told my bench clerk to keep this file in my chamber because i will go through it in my in the uh, afternoon lunch session right. lunch break right. Right. after after taking my lunch break when i saw that file i found there was no stay at all okay the matter was pending kept pending in 1983 okay 1992 it was like we just adjourned as await orders but there were no stay it was for 10 years oh, okay so there was no such time. stay order that uh, no, actually that... people were waiting but it, it just got adjourned so many yes, times because later i learned that the concerned council submitted that matter is stayed the judge okay. believe the words of no 10 yes Yes, sir. Now I get that. Now I get that. So ideally, we should not be going by the words of counsel, but we should actually get the petition details if that happened in the higher courts. Actually, yes, definitely, sir. Because what happens? We believe the advocates because they are officers of the court. It yes. is responsibility of the advocates also. Right. Then what happened? You know, then I called the advocate at three o'clock. Right, sir. He said, "Sir, I am. My client told me that he stayed, so I made submission. That was entered." simple then i told <laughs> i want to dispose of this case within next two months yes sir you must get your client by i gave the date with the next week then i, I concluded the trial and dispose of that within two months which was pending since 10 years so in this way the involvement of the judge is also right. important at the same time the advocates as the court officers Role. should assist and make all fair submissions yes sir so i i think this brings me to uh, you know some more attention maybe uh, we are talking about instances where you know false information has been given so there are certain sections actually which uh, are provide as guidelines where like section 344 if you see which deals with the yes. uh, like knowingly or willfully giving some false evidence or as such yes. fabricated yes. false evidence and also there is another section 309 which deals with the postponing the commencement of a trial or an inquiry yes, yes, and matters related yes. to the remand of an accused by a warrant so yes, yes. by the way if you see sir like it it's a major thing that actually we need to consider like these application of these particular sections as such there are personal liberty aspects that we are talking about and then there may be illegal uh, detention that can happen in uh, some of the cases so the implementation of these sections when you see in this very context of speedy disposal like we wanted to know how do you actually uh, perceive these uh, sections implementations see first of all when the accused is in custody 
that once a charge sheet is filed on priority base that case must be taken because his personal liberty is curtailed absolutely it's not that all cases will get ended ended in conviction yes if we put him after 5 years the time spent by him will be very serious abridgement of article 21 absolutely so yeah. that must be done so in giving the false evidence now new year pc is in the offing right. dns says that bharatiya nyaya suraksha samit so i am studying it we are making some suggestions to that my yes. suggestion is that whoever files false case whoever files false charge sheet should be booked should be booked and case should be opened against them and punishment should be the equal to the that false charge sheet they have filed and penalty should be double of that one because today it is necessary that checking the filing of the false cases is necessary if the courts convict an accused it it is they are meant for that but if a innocent person is convicted that questions the efficacy of the system yes sir there is a saying that let 100 criminals escape not an innocent be punished right. of course right. i qualify this one <laughs> it's not that that doesn't mean that uh, allow 100 criminals escape yes sir the principle and that is take yes. care that an innocent is not convicted don't allow the hundreds to escape right. take care that innocent is not convicted so right, in my service i have used the section 344 crpc mm -hmm. on many occasions right right, right. they were giving the evidence uh, recklessly despite knowing the truth i have so sometimes I, i want to bring i want to bring one more uh, crucial aspect so the yes. process before it comes to the uh, you know after the charge sheet uh, filing process by that time the role of the investigation officer or the uh, station house officer as such in the cfc in the criminal cases it would be very heavy and then uh, for courts actually that's the starting point the investigation comes up the io submits certain kind of issues so i wanted to know in maybe in some of the cases there may be situations that the io himself has involved in the false and frivolous accusations that has been made against the you know so called accused right so and later it turns out to be false and frivolous you know at the yes. at the stage of the trial or you know whatever it is so are there any provisions actually that we can deal with uh you know such kind of uh, you know eradicating such kind of situations like what what all we have uh in hand to probably fight against such instances See, today today exactly don't have any direct provision to deal with uh, false cases that's why i am suggesting an uh, amendment ipc there shall be a direct provision saying that whoever files any false case mm -hmm. complaint a charge sheet if the accused is acquitted on the holding that the case is false in that case all those responsible for filing false case should be accused a case should register against them very court which acquitted the accused and those accused shall be the witnesses in that case and punishment should be the equal to that of for the false case which was filed and penalty should be double because what happens uh, in the in the criminal procedure in the criminal justice system sir see there are four stages one is commission of the crime right another is followed police investigation right. and prosecution ending a judicial decision right sir i i was uh, often telling that the in criminal cases io is the first judge correct absolutely io is the first judge right he knows more than what judge knows through the evidence because he will be there on the spot yes if the io is honest truth will come out this for fabrications this uh, uh, they, these things are not permitted under law but still they do it so to check because this uh, just uh, just a nambi narayan case scientist mm -hmm. who was uh, in jail in the false espionage case the supreme court has come down very heavy heavily and uh, ordered compensation of 50 lakhs and allowed him to pursue his remedies right. so in every false case there must be a compensation for every citizen should be paid by the court uh, government and it should record from the concern right sir. if that is done and in civil cases it shall be the heavy cost compensatory heavy cost compensatory cost if these things are in, uh, implemented 
then I think there will be some chuck on the false cases. Right, sir. Otherwise, it's not that's... possible. Yes. If yeah. the accused gets acquitted after 10 years, he goes and no remedy. Right. And right. those persons will be laughing. No, I, I anyway, I got him wondering the taking courts uh, perambulations. He's, he's okay, no problem. I'm happy because he, he suffered. Yes, yes. Uh, that particular uh, angle of the, you know, just for the sake of grudge, actually, you put up a frivolous case. And then, you know, at the end, anyway, the accused would have, you know, the so-called accused, even if he is not convicted at the end of the day, there is no repayment for what he has gone through, what you would have actually gone through for, uh, you know, being in the prison. So that's, a, that's something that um, uh, is important to understand. Sir, uh, right now you have been, uh, you know, practicing as a senior advocate after a lot of um, experience uh, from the bench as such, as a judge. Now we wanted to know um, uh, on the uh, different perspective, like how does this timelines uh, of the justice uh, kind of, you know, impact the quality of the legal representation. And then I want to understand the confidence that, uh, you know, the litigants will have in the overall judicial systems. Can you just uh, share some instances where, you know, delayed justice probably has affected your clients or uh, mm -hmm. so, something in your, uh, uh, you know, practice that you would have seen, sir? Yes. See, the timely justice means, see what happens, a person is expecting something in the next few years. Right. But that all depends upon the result of this case. He, he doesn't get that because of the delay. Right. By that time, see, when a client succeeds getting 50 acres of land, right. at that time, 50% was sold by him, okay. the other side. Right. So in this fascinating effect. Therefore, what happens? Now people even are enjoying accepting with all joy that even if this is given delayedly. Because I uh, told you in one case that a woman who was thrown out of husband's house immediately after marriage. Just okay. and they didn't have any children, the husband died. Okay. Her family was rich family. Okay. And she was thrown on the street. She was just uh, selling bananas for livelihood. And okay, that case that. was before me. Partition sold. Mm -hmm. I had disposed of that case within one year. I have assumed the charge of that court. Okay. And I heard that she is entitled for husband's share of some few acres of land. The right See, do you know share. that? That lady straight away saluted the court by laying on the ground. Okay. In, before the court hall. Yes, no, this the... I am not saying that. It's to me, it is the system. System, yes, she was of course. Happy that, she was happy that she got justice. That this enhanced the confidence of the people yes. in the system. Yes. There is a delay. I got Absolutely. it. But if we like given this little more, and in one case, tell you to, if we are a little bit uh, vigilant, in one case it so happened, the Son, who well, have well, a plenty filed a suit for his father's share. Defendant was his uncle. Mm -hmm. Okay. The uncle said, "No, he is not my brother's son. His mother is not, not my brother's wife." Okay. Then I dispose of that. Interestingly, the very defendant had given some land to this plenty, accepting a relationship, and he disputed in the suit. Then I dis I will decree the suit with compensatory cost of three thousand. Within, within 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 six months, sir, I am I am told by the very concept plaintiff that no sir he has given all the property. Achha, okay. Property to my client. Okay. Yes, he got it. Therefore, if we are little bit vigilant and impose some costs, correct, that will make impact. impact. No that, doubt. That, that's a bigger impact that uh, we will see. Yeah, yes, definitely. Let them not feel that they can say anything, escape. Okay. Some Thanks pinch for. Yes, sir. Thanks for bringing those, uh, uh, you know, aspects a uh, little bit on the, I appreciate what we have discussed. Probably, can you just shed some light on the specific re reforms or measures probably the legal system can adopt to, to, to address the current challenges uh, that we see on a day-to-day -day basis yes. in the system, sir? The, yes. the current challenges are the delay, mainly. 
and now i know that the pendency is such that it's not possible to achieve this goal of timely justice so first uh, my suggestion is at all levels there needs to be fast track courts because i was the fast track judge for 6 years in wherever i went almost all the old matters were cleared by me not a single matter was left so in in that way in the fast track courts up to 2010 almost all the old criminal cases in the karnataka were disposed of so if that is done then number of courts with the limited cases with time gap time frame right. if this is fixed definitely we will achieve this goal of a timely justice right. because the supreme court time and again has given many gu- guidelines in matters of uh, personal liberty that 1994 Yeah, nineteen ninety four is thirteen forty nine. Jogendra yes. Kumar case. Particular yes. what happens in civil case? They get the whatever time spent in jail cannot be compensated by any. Right. Giving money is something, but that will not uh, uh, satisfy the man because he was suffering for for, uh, for being incarcerated in the right. yes for no fault of his. Therefore, in the same way, <clears throat> the. In the you can see that nami narayan case it may be it may be case of rini johar these all cases have given guidelines don't tolerate these false cases right even in uh, preeti gupta case supreme court has come very heavily on arresting the husband and his family members recklessly so right. personal liberty aspect is taken serious note by the supreme court arnesh kumar must... arnesh kumar arnesh kumar case, case. arnesh kumar guidelines are there dk basu case is there yes sir Yeah, okay, okay, okay. But more than this, what I am I would like to tell you is, is the presiding officer's most in, inquisitiveness important? In in the 1993, there was a guideline in Karnataka High Court, uh, circular issued. If the accused is produced before the magistrate, if nobody files a kalat, then in that case, that remand should not be for more than four, should not be for 14 days. You remand just till next date. Right, sir. This was the guy with a with a fond hope that someone who has seen him in the court hall may inform his relatives because at that time still D K Basu case was not there. So right. he, he, how is such a guideline help me? I tell you, in one case, an accused was brought before me, and I I remanded him till next day, ten thirty. Okay, okay. But that accused yes accused was not produced at ten thirty. The next day, okay. It was produced at three o'clock. Okay. And the boy, the accused who has walked on his own, was physically lifted and produced before me on the next day. Okay. And the so reason was because in the in the judicial custody, <clears throat> he was tortured by the uh, jail wardens. Okay. They were jail wardens, not police. Okay. Okay. Jail wardens. Then see, in that case, what is the duty of the judge? When I protested, I told him what has happened. Right. The accused told me that, sir, the jail warders have arrested me and they have bet me on my foot with the boot clubs that you will not be able to walk. Yeah. Then, uh, then immediately I noted everything in the order sheet. Mm-hmm. Then I referred him to hospital. He was in hospital for twenty days. That was a serious uh, uh, impact. Yes. Okay. Then, when he was brought before me. I registered a case against the days jail wardens. I made him to depose and two hundred CRPC registered case and issued summons to them for three twenty four IPC. Okay, so in this that's... way we have taken serious note of personal liberty and not hard to harm or injure the accused in custody. Right, sir. Right, sir. Sir, with your um, uh, uh, you know. previous discussions that we understood that the legal remedies are probably through the guidelines that we have been seeing yes, 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 through yes. the false and frivolous uh, yes. cases basically so we also wanted to know little bit about the uh, kind of you know frivolous litigations that keep happening in the legal system outside india how are they handled is there anything that we can actually adopt something from the uh, maybe western nations or maybe another uh, set of uh, you know constitutions that we can learn from yes uh, uh, of course uh, i have got very little information about that but once uh, i am told that in the western countries if the in a criminal case 
if the, there is any lapses are noted, the investigation officer is answerable. Okay. He is answerable. If there is a dishonest investigation, lapses in investigation, for all that, investigation officer is responsible. Therefore, see, in that country, I am told that in uh, foreign countries, the statement of the statement made before the police by the witnesses, when if it is starts to tell, if the IO says that this witness is, has given a statement before me, that is admissible in evidence. Right. Okay. But if, if that is done here in the, when no, no one is safe, that is a horrible situation. Right, right, right. So, I absolutely we, accept that. Yes, yes. We can brisk investigation there, no? Uh, I'm told that one justice, honorable justice, women in touch, a farmer, CGI, when I had our meet, we were discussing, see okay. that in England, within 111 days, mm -hmm. the criminal cases will be over. Okay. Here we are given 30, 90 days time to file the charge sheet in the cases where more than 10 year punishment is there. Yes. So the speed with it is done. Yes. Now, of course, I don't expect same speed here, but we can do little bit, little more right. to achieve this goal of speed justice and uh, timely justice. Sure. And in, in, in civil cases, it should be heavy compensatory cost. Yes, sir. So I think um, we have got a lot of learnings, sir, like a lot of crucial information on how to, uh, you know, practically look at the, uh, you know, judgments which spoke about the false and frivolous cases and then the role of IO and then probably what we can have as, you know, uh, you know, remedies in such cases. So it is definitely a hope that, you know, the system and more and more cases, whenever they're identified, uh, the uh, judgments are passed against those uh, uh, litigants for, you know, with heavy costs, uh, you know, for bringing the false and frivolous allegations so that the compromising of the personal liberty, does, uh, liberty doesn't happen from the yes, yes. accused perspective. That's something that to be really uh, wanted to look back. And then uh, on the legal system aspects, it's it's collectively uh, as such, if we try to you know achieve uh, that uh, timely justice, it's really possible and it's not an impossible concept and probably bringing a lot of other aspects uh, on, uh, you know, not postponing and not bringing the adjournments without any reasonable, uh, you know, explanation and all those aspects are really uh good inputs for us sir uh, uh i wanted to uh probably try to conclude this conversation uh, uh with you sir i thank all your team and all the those who are behind this in identifying me because i am here in some corner of the karnataka state you have identified me and made me to speak few words of my experience which i hope that they may make some little impact, though I don't say that much impact, little impact, because I am, even today, I'm concerned with the cause of justice. So people should get timely justice. That's my wish. Absolutely, absolutely, sir. We'll hope for that. Uh, we, are, we are trying every bit to bring the awareness so that, you know, this kind of um, uh, delays will be arrested. And then uh, we will try to uh, bring more you know, transparency in the system as well as uh, we'll try to achieve the timely justice as such we are talking. So that wraps us, uh, wraps up our discussion on the timely justice for litigants and the importance and the challenges that we have uh, discussed. We hope you found this conversation enlightening and thought provoking. Thank you for joining us today and we look forward to having you with us for the future discussions on legal matters. Goodbye and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>